This is a Skyline 5 closed loop charging video. This video is on charging the solar loop with non-toxic propylene glycol. For this process, you will need a fluid pump to charge the solar loop, three laundry hoses for connections, an air pressure gauge, and a compressor to charge the expansion tank with air. You will also need two to three gallons of non-toxic propylene glycol. Never use toxic ethylene glycol, which is typically used in automobile radiators. Sierra brand or equal propylene glycol can be picked up at most auto parts stores. Other propylene glycol brands are available at camping centers where it is used to protect plumbing from freezing. Solarroofs.com supplies Dowfrost heavy duty propylene glycol with its platinum systems or when ordered separately. Pressurized glycol solar water heating systems, like the Skyline 4 and 5 closed loop systems, require an expansion tank to absorb the expansion and contraction of the glycol as it heats and cools during its daily cycle. An expansion tank has a rubber bladder, also called a diaphragm, which moves in and out as the temperature of the fluid changes its volume. A properly charged solar loop will have 8 to 10 pounds more fluid pressure on the fluid bladder side of the expansion tank than the original air pressure charge on the other side of the bladder. Charging the fluid to more than 10 pounds over air pressure will flood the expansion tank with fluid and the bladder may burst, a condition not covered under warranty. Charging with less than 8 pounds may not leave enough fluid in the expansion tank to cover conditions such as when the fluid contracts in cold weather. A vacuum can actually be created when enough fluid is not in the expansion tank, potentially causing a system failure. It is vital to check the air pressure in the expansion tank before charging the solar loop. This is done by using a standard pressure gauge at the air valve on the bottom of the tank as shown. If you're using a high pressure professional pump like the Granger Dayton 4CB57 pump shown in this video, pressurize the expansion tank to 30 pounds. If you're using a low pressure pump such as a drill pump, be sure the air pressure is about 12 pounds because a drill pump can only build up to 20 to 22 pounds of pressure on the fluid side when using a 1600 RPM or faster 110 volt high speed drill. When using a high pressure pump, the solar loop will be charged to 40 pounds with fluid. When using a low pressure pump, the solar loop fluid side will be charged to 20 to 22 pounds with fluid. The result will be having the correct amount of fluid in the expansion tank. See the installation manual for diagrams of charging the expansion tank. As a final step, the solar loop will be pressurized to 50 pounds on the air side with a compressor to increase the solar loop's boiling point to over 260 degrees Fahrenheit, a temperature the solar loop can get to in stagnation conditions. The fluid side will reflect the same pressure as the air side when the expansion tank has a correct amount of fluid in it. Procedure for charging the solar loop. You will first need to flush the solar loop of any debris and check for leaks. Hook a laundry hose from the hose bib at the bottom of the storage tank to the top charging port hose bib V1. Use a large screwdriver to turn the tank hose bib on and off. Professionals using the Dayton or similar high power pump may choose to use an extra hose and have the pump between V1 and the tank hose bib to prime the pump. Connect a garden hose or laundry hose to hose bib V2. Have the other end of the hose go to a drain bucket or outside the house for this flush cycle. Close ball valve V3 between V1 and V2. Open the tank hose bib all the way, then open V1 and then V2. Run water at full pressure through the system to flush out any debris from the solar loop. Close V2 and build up to 40 pounds of pressure on the solar loop's pressure gauge then close V1. The pressure will read on the solar loop pressure gauge when the fluid side pressure exceeds the air pressure in the expansion tank. Check for leaks at all connections including the collectors. Tighten any leaking compression unions until the leak stops and then turn an additional one quarter turn. A note of caution. Do not use water to flush the solar loop in freezing weather unless the sun is out and you'll be immediately injecting propylene glycol into the solar loop. If not, blow out all remaining water in the collectors with a compressor to prevent freeze damage. In cold areas, 
build a glycol bucket with four to five gallons of 50-50 water to glycol mix. In less cold areas, as low as a 30 to 70 glycol to water mix is okay. Connect a laundry hose from V1 to the bucket outlet and the second hose from the pump inlet into the bottom of the glycol bucket. The third hose will connect to V2 and then go into the second bucket as shown. V3 must be closed. The purpose here is to have a place for the water in the solo loop to go and to be able to see when the fluid changes to the color of the propylene glycol. When this happens, quickly switch the hose over to the glycol bucket for the air purge cycle. Open V1 and let water, pressurized from the expansion tank, flow back through the hoses and pump into the glycol bucket to clear all air out and prime the pump. This process is important as the pump is not self-priming and running it dry can damage it. Hold on to the V2 hose in its second bucket so it does not fly around and give you a glycol shower. You may want to use a weight such as a valve or threaded brass or iron nipple on the end of the V2 hose to hold it into the buckets. Turn on the pump and then open V1 and then V2. Watch for either the glycol to come out of the V2 hose into the second bucket or for the glycol to be within four to five inches of the bottom of the glycol bucket and then quickly switch the V2 hose into the glycol bucket. It is very important that no air get into the solo loop so try to not have the two hoses too close together. Air in the solo loop can cause system failure. If needed Add more glycol and or water to maintain a good mixture. When you switch the V2 hose into the glycol bucket, the air purge cycle is started. Being very careful to keep both hoses low in the fluid and not too close to each other, run the pump for about five minutes to be sure all air is clear from the solar loop. Close V2 and build pressure to about 20 to 22 pounds when using a low pressure pump or drill pump or to 40 pounds with a high pressure pump. If you find your pump is not strong enough, you can use a laundry hose completely purged of air to build the pressure in the solo loop to 20 pounds. Remember, you want about 8 to 10 pounds more pressure in the loop than the expansion tank was charged to with air. Close V1 and open V3. Run the solar pump to see if hot glycol is coming down the lines. Caution, it could be very hot. Finally, pressurize the expansion tank with air to 50 pounds as read on your solar loop pressure gauge to increase the boiling point of the system. Your solar loop is now charged and ready for many years of operation.